Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hello and welcome to my channel. Today is my first painting tutorial following my birthday celebration yesterday. And if you haven't watched my video, um, go ahead and um, watch them. <laughs> I mean, watch it. I'll be linking in the description box below the the link to that video so that you see the new painting materials that I got myself for my birthday. Um, I haven't decided really when to post this tutorial. Maybe I'll be posting this today after doing the video or maybe tomorrow, Tuesday, US time. So let me decide that later. But for now, let's just paint a yellow rose you know i love uh roses in general but i think yellow roses are more attractive than the red one i know that red roses are a symbol of passion and um great love something like that and fiery emotions but for me yellow symbolizes some more of a peaceful vibe and it's just a happy thing for me to see anything colored yellow. So I'll be writing in the description box below the colors that I'll be using for today's tutorial. And I'll be mentioning them as well in this video. So we'll be using cadmium yellow. That's cadmium, cadmium yellow. We'll be using primary blue. And permanent green deep. I'll be using brown red. You can actually use burnt sienna if you have. It just so happened that I don't have a burnt, uh, uh, I don't have uh, burnt sienna at the moment. Okay, and we'll be using orange. Okay, tiny one. I just got them yesterday, the, the small ones. And medium yellow. So I'll be using two shades of yellow. Again, we have cadmium and this one is the medium yellow. Okay. So, of course, I can never have a painting without titanium white. Yeah, so that's perfect. It's, it's just white. And I'll be sketching first the subject, but you know me. I'll be using my paint straight onto the canvas when I sketch. So just get your paintbrush. Any paintbrush will do. This is just the sketching part. Nothing too serious about this one. First, just go ahead and grab a brush that you want or your favorite brush for sketching. And I'll be using, um, I'm going to use my brown red so that you can see against the white canvas paper that I'm using. This is uh, 11 by 14 canvas paper. So I'm going to sketch first. We will be doing first the shape of the rose. And you know me, I'm very raw when it comes to um, sketching. I don't really do sketching in detail because I think sketches are supposed to look like sketches <laughs> when they look like they are finished very detailed it just stresses me out it puts so much pressure on me that I have to follow strict lines and all that that's why you don't really see me paint buildings because they're just too strict you have to measure proportion and all that and for me it just removes the, the fun in the painting process. It's just me. But of course, I've done. I've done, okay? Two or three um, structured or building like, um, or building or structured places, paintings, okay? So this is basically the shape of the rose. And we will be doing the underpainting first so that we won't be stressing so much about it uh, once we are done or once we are ready to go ahead with the what they call this the detailing part okay so for the sketch for the underpainting part I'll be using a fairly wide brush as you can see here and you know what if you're in the US it's too cold oh my god like it's super cold and if only you can see me at the moment, I'm all wrapped up like a burrito. <laughs> I'm all wrapped up and I'm just inside my house. Anyway, just, just to let you know, 
That's why you will keep hearing me, you know, uh, snorting or something. <laughs> it's just too cold. Oh my God. And then for the underpainting, I'm going to use my orange plus brown. Okay. Again, this is just the underpainting. Underpainting is supposed to provide the dark, the depth, the shadows. Okay. So I'll be using this color right on the right side of the rose. Later, this will make sense for now. Okay, I'll be using a little bit of black color later. For now, I'm just gonna allow this to be there. Okay, more brown because this will be more on the dark side. On the dark side. Okay, now I'll be using my... I'm just gonna remove the excess paint on my brush, but I'm not gonna wash it super clean so that... Um, the dark colors are still there and I'll be using the brush to apply a little bit of dark colors right here on the center of the rose and as you can see here I'm moving in a rotational motion all right and I'm gonna grab my medium yellow okay. and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this don't worry too much about the details because we're just trying to underpaint here please don't think too much when you sketch just do as i do it will make sense later okay. i'm gonna get my cad yellow and as you can see i'm not really washing my brush and i like it okay I might make some adjustments later. I want to make the rose really big. I want the rose to cover my canvas. Okay, it's gonna extend right here. And I really want it big, 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 big. I like big flowers. If, you, if you've been following me uh, since 2017, you probably have seen a lot of my flower paintings. I usually did them in series, so when it's hibiscus time, you're going to see me one week doing hibiscus flowers. So I'm really used to painting flowers. And I love painting flowers. Cad yellow right here, down here. Okay, so you can see some browns are still here. But it's okay because we are just underpainting. We will be using black, all right? So why I did not mention it, we will only be using that during the later part of the painting process, not now. Cad yellow. Okay, I'm gonna make my leaf, oh no, 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 the petal more big. So I want to make sure I'm going to wet my brush a bit because it's drying. Again, this is the underpainting. I don't want you to worry too much just yet. Okay. And make your edges quite rough. You don't want some edges that are too neat. Please. This is cad yellow. Right. And also here. Just continue. And you probably are wondering why am I covering some areas that I've already painted brown. Um, that's because we're in the underpainting portion of the process. So some areas will be painted over. Not because we want to waste paint, but layering helps us achieve some sort of texture and depth and solidness. Okay. So this is basically the shape. 
you will see the dark portion to uh, to actually give you an idea where the light will be coming from. And since, as you can see, a lot of yellows are in this part. The light will be coming from the left side. Okay. Now. Just gonna color it yellow. I should have gotten my black because it's not really normal for me to not use black. But let me just relayer this with some cad yellow. Now I'm gonna allow that to dry. Let me get my black paint. So I'm just gonna get some black paint. I just want the black to be there. Even if I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna use too much black today because we're painting a bright flower. All right, so, okay. I'm gonna get my small brush gonna dab onto my white and just already make some detail of where things are gonna go so using pure white titanium white I'm just gonna go um, around the edges of each petal trying to identify where things are gonna go Mm -hmm. Some areas are still wet and it's fine. You don't have to rush. Let's just first identify where things are going to go. center okay we will be detailing this later for now let's just go and start doing the separation this will separate the petals from each other this detail I mean these details okay. I'm gonna apply some white okay I'm gonna have to make some adjustments okay made a mistake And using white, I'm going to apply it right here to highlight this petal. And then I'm going to get my yellow. Let's apply some yellow colors inside. Okay. 
apply some yellowy colors you're like um, in the second uh, layer of underpainting for me this is still underpainting we're not doing any uh, finished detail everything is raw but kind of guess already how this is going to end. Okay, I'm just coloring it with some yellow color. Okay, like that. Using yellow and white, I'm just gonna combine them and lighten things up a bit right here. And I'm just so tempted to just use my hand because you know me and my um, finger painting style. Okay, wet your brush if you find yourself having a hard time um, applying the paint simply because the paint is drying pretty quickly. I'm just mixing yellow and white just to give it some light yellowy color. And again, I'm using my, my brush, I mean my fingers, because there are brush strokes that can only be achieved if you use your hands. Well, at least for me, it does work. like that okay just like that and then mix some yellow and white just to create some more too wide. I'm just going to brighten this area. And also this part. And this part. Okay, like that. Okay, now I'll be changing my brush. Okay, before I proceed. Okay, I'll be changing my brush. Or you can simply just wash your brush uh, very nicely. Now, I'll be using a little bit of black and brown. Okay, you can even add a little bit of orange. And I want to make sure that this area, oh, that's too dark. I'm going to darken this area to give the painting more depth. And don't overdo this step 
just make sure that there is some dark portion okay just like that we're starting to create some depth okay right in the center in some areas here again don't overdo this don't make too much dark areas because we want to we want to paint a happy yellow flower okay. and also right here okay. carefully apply it just make sure that it's there and if you commit a mistake it's fine we will go back to it later and using this dark brown I'm just gonna go around the petal to start separating it you can change your brush if you want like me I feel like I should have changed my brush really to I should have changed to a much fine brush but I can uh, manage Right, right here. Okay, and also here. I will adjust this. Okay, just like that. Again, you simply go around the flower. to give it more shadows I'm gonna glaze it with some dark colors right here okay okay just like that some folds on the flower all right Okay, we're not yet done, definitely. We are going to soften some areas. So I'm going to change my brush now, just like what I said <laughs> earlier, but I just didn't do it. So I'm going to uh, go for a cleaner brush. I'm going to mix my white and yellow. And I'm going to go and make some highlighting right here again you don't want to do too much of hard lines you don't want to do that Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of brown to that yellow mixture so that it, become, it becomes more dark. Okay, very subtle. Okay, just like that. Also here. Okay, again, just tiny bit of that, of that dark yellow or muted yellow. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna darken this portion since it's in the on the right side. Choose another brush, clean brush. I'm gonna go for pure white. And look at the brush strokes, how I do this. brighten a bit just a bit Inside petals details. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna use a very small brush. I'm gonna get my black. Okay, I'm gonna get tiny bit of black. And I'm just gonna go around some petals to separate it from, actually this is too much of detailing. Just to separate it we're gonna lighten that later for now let's just you know let's just go i'm gonna mix it with my orange let's okay brown let's darken this area but make it softer so when you apply it make it softer i'm using my fingers to soften it because doing it with hard harsh lines will not really give that natural effect. Okay, so don't, I don't suggest you do harsh lines. Make it soft. Flowers are supposed to be um, soft. Okay, right here. I'm just going to soften this. It's too dark. You know that? It's just too dark. I'm softening it. Okay. I'm going to get my yellow again. It's all about controlling, controlling your hand. Let's get some 
it folds. Let's lighten it a bit. It's too dark. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around again, the petals, very subtle. gonna get my yellow to clean it okay. but I'm retaining some dark areas because we want to create some shadowy part it's actually all about technique and if you're doing the separation lines I call them separation lines Make it them, I mean, make them thin. You don't want thick separation lines. It's just not consistent with gonna brighten a bit this area try to make it soft And white again. I think I will have to make some adjustments again. Yeah. Okay, some yellow color. But we will be darkening the inside of the flower later. Okay. For now, let's just finish this yellowy part. Okay. And again, don't forget, don't forget the separation lines. You know, these separation lines, 
will make the painting more realistic. How? By actually giving that illusion that one petal is on top of the other or one petal is below or under another petal. It's just an illusion. Let's get some yellow. Mix with white. Okay. So let's create another petal. I'm going to glaze some spaces with some yellowy color. Okay, that's it. We haven't we haven't done the background and the back the background will make all the difference as well okay i'm gonna go again and separate it this petal from that petal okay and then i'm just gonna make some dark colors on the right side. Oops, did I just mess it up? I just messed it up. I'm gonna darken it a bit. To give it some 3D effect. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright. As you can see, I'm just doing some watered down markings just to give it some little folds. Okay, and now I want to do the background so that it stands out already because we all see the flower as of the moment. And I'm gonna use some green, okay? You will hear some machines outside. That's because I think they're removing the ice from the road.
So I'm gonna get my green and white and black. I'm just gonna combine everything. So let's do first some greeny colors. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. So make it look more green. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. It's just a combination of black and green, which is perfect. give it the illusion of um, garden setting or a base setting okay. actually you can do abstractish background here it doesn't have to be anything in particular but the good thing about using green and yellows in the background is that you're already giving your painting that vibe or that setting that it's somewhere natural whether it be the garden or a vase or a pot or okay you can hear i think that's a fire fire truck suggestion of leaf here and there you can even add a little bit of suggestion of flowers on the sides so I'm gonna get my yellow while we're waiting for the flower the fl I'm so cold guys you can hear that I'm a little bit of shaking <laughs> it's so cold and I am painting near the window I'm gonna get my yellow, all right. I'm gonna apply a little bit of brown so that it's muted. And then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do some suggestion of flowers in the background just for this flower not to be too alone and lonely. I think the temperature will go up a bit tomorrow um, we're just experiencing it now but uh, it will be better soon but even if the situation is like this I still love to paint I just I'm obsessed about painting that really nothing can stop me So I'm going to apply a little bit of white marking so that it's more of bright. Okay. These are just tiny details that you can actually do away with, but you know me, I'm just going to do it.
just like that. And yeah, some light yellow background to really give our painting that bright color. Okay, like that, so that it's really, really bright. You see, while the background is so abstract-ish, it provided some sort of life okay, that surrounds the flower. Okay. I'm gonna change my brush to a more pointy brush. I'm gonna dab onto my white and go back to highlighting or detailing. I'm just going to go around the petals. Use pure white for this one. Mm -hmm. Just go around the petals. Make them bright. It's a good thing about having a background when your subject is full of highlights. It's going to help in highlighting the painting because when it's just pure white, you will have a hard time um, highlighting it against the white because it's already white. Okay. I'm gonna apply some yellowy colors right here and then a little bit of browny yellowy colors so that you give it a little bit of folds and dark colors Also here, down here. Okay. Make this appear more on more greeny because of the absence of light. It's still yellow, but the absence of light, the darkness, is causing it to be more on the greeny color. You know what? In all honesty, if ever if um if there's one thing that is positive about the cold weather, that would be um my skin. My face feels so tight and um it's actually good for the skin. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean too much of something is always I mean too much of anything is always bad. But we all know that this winter is going to stop sooner or later. 
It's just that uh, I kind of like the effect on my skin because it's cold. Yeah, let us think it that way. Always look on the positive side of things. <laughs> because when you just think that, oh, I hate winter, I hate... But it happens every time. So it should be really nothing to you already. Because complaining will not solve anything. It won't. Just take advantage. Be thankful that you're experiencing winter. Some people are actually wishing that they experience winter. <laughs> Come on. Maybe because it's too hot in their area. Maybe because, you know, they like the idea of winter. Just be thankful that you have the means to protect yourself from too much cold. Of course, um, I feel sorry for those who can't. For the disadvantaged um, yeah but let's not let's be positive if you're like me painting in a cold day um, it's actually one way of forgetting about the weather when you're doing something else right okay so this I'm just lightening the left side because again the light is coming coming from the left side so the left side of the flower should be brighter I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow to suggest that there are more flowers surrounding this rose Okay. okay, now I'm going to get my black. And using my black, I'm going to go inside the rose. Okay, maybe, I'm sorry, not black, but yellow. Okay, let's just go and apply some more yellow colors. You can hear again. So I just allowed you to listen to that. Okay. 
Just say that. Let's do some markings on the background just to give it more suggestion of natural things going on. Maybe some dark colors, some black colors here and there. Just to add more depth. gonna get my orange and let's color this with orange color lightening everything Let's lighten up a bit. Let's not darken this too much. It's too dark. It should just be on the orangey side of things. go ahead and let's do some more markings Okay, some more white. Okay, I forgot to separate. Okay, let's do some separation lines right here. Just outline your flower. Okay, make the outline a little more uh, raw and uneven. Okay. 
just use pure black right under it. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And then using black, I'm gonna make some dark. Oops, so what? Probably. I'm gonna darken this portion to really suggest that it's not receiving good light. So right here, not too much though. You can use a brush just to spread it evenly. here some white so just keep going keep going and don't give up I'm gonna do a little bit of shading right here Using some browns again. Just go around the area along the edges. some more white just to highlight the petal and then some dark green yellowy color to give this some dark areas suggestion of absence of light 
right here. So right here, and of course right here. some more white some yellows Okay. I'm going to glaze it with yellow. Like that. Because you don't want this to be too dark. brown and orange
Alright, just like that. I'm just waiting for it to completely dry because I want to glaze this. Inside. I'm just applying a little bit of orange inside. I think this is too dark. Okay, now I'm going to use a cleaner brush. I'm going to brighten this area using white. Okay. Just to make some areas brighter. Okay. We want to make sure that the light we do the light play very well. Okay, I really want to make sure that light is done well here. I'm just going to thin the separation lines. This is really nice. Okay, I'm waiting for this to dry, but I will glaze it with a little bit of yellow. Okay, 
and white. So I'm gonna try, okay, it's a very, um, what do you call this? I don't want to suggest this to you, but if it work, if it works for me, you just do it if you want to, okay? I'm just gonna get some water down white and mix it with a little bit of yellow. All right, and I'm gonna start spreading. I'm gonna start that. So water down white, just to make everything one, okay. Some highlights. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my brown water down inside. Remember to water it down, it, it's very, very important. gonna add a little bit of black just to darken this
Alright. Wow, this is really, really, really nice. I like it. This is a very nice way of starting my birthday. Okay, more yellows. So it's just about playing with colors. Yellows and it's amazing how one color one color flower has actually a lot of colors to it that only an observant eye can see if you really look at it there are so many colors in an apple it's not just red it has a lot of colors and yeah that's what i really like about painting hints of green on the flower because even if this is a yellow rose there are hints of green on the flower that just look at it closely you'll see it I really like this one I absolutely love this one and I'm just gonna darken this area I think we, we really did a great job here, okay? So I'm gonna sign this now. We've spent almost one hour and 30 minutes just doing this, but I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my gray color. I'm gonna sign right here. Very tiny. And it's finished. So I hope you enjoy that one and I hope you paint along with me. I'm going to link in the description box below some other rose painting tutorials that I've done in the past so that you can choose from among them from lots of lots of tutorials that I have. So see you in my next one. And again, thank you for the birthday greetings, guys. I was really literally happy on my birthday. So see you and have a great day. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love you.